डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी नमस्कार आई डॉक्टर रीना वैष्णव वेलकम्स यू ऑल डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटीज वीडियो लेक्चर सीरीज दिस पर्टिकुलर सेशन विल फोकस ऑन एम ए पार्ट टू पेपर फाइव लिटरेरी थियोरी एंड क्रिटिसिजम ब्लॉक फोर न्यू क्रिटिसिजम टू बिगीन विथ one of the most frightening topics of english literature is literary theory but before we embark into the journey of literary theory let me tell you one thing that literary theory is not very hard it just involves that you should understand the concept and once you understand the concept or theory how to apply that theory and literature literary theory can become one of the most interesting part of literature but before we understand literary theory it is important that we should understand what is literary criticism let's first see what is literary criticism i just give you one example like uh, when we go to the marriage when we go to the party we look at the food what kind of flower it has we look at the decoration we look at the people who are all there in the party and next day we come back home and we talk to our friends over the phone and we give opinion about that party we tell them that the food was not good but the dessert was good and we talk about decoration and we give opinion and analysis of the party this process is called criticism there is a difference between criticism and criticizing means criticizing something it means analyzing and evaluating it actually means judging that thing analyzing that thing and talking about positive as well as negative aspects of that particular thing we critic so many things when we go for movie we normally read the critic reviews right these critics we can say it, they are the film critics they tell us how the plot is how the story line how the characters acted in the movie what kind of age group the movie is targeting is that movie worth watching all these questions are answered by the film critic there is a very famous movie which we have a food critic and that movie we see there is one food critic who goes to restaurants and in those restaurants he eats the food and he gives the opinion about that restaurant normally people read his review and then they decide which restaurant they want to visit so this is all about criticism and how we critic things around us now let's look at literature and how criticism applies to literature when it comes to literature we have so many books there are people who read those books and give their opinion about those books criticism in literature can be on two bases evaluating literature in general evaluating literature on specific works how they are different evaluating literature in general let's we take one example of aristotle aristotle in his poetics talks about evaluating literature in general he did not touch any specific topic he has not talked about specific writers or works but he has given uh, characteristics of a theater characteristics of a play and poem and what about evaluating specific works on the other side we see we have writers like matthew arnold who has written a work 
called the study of poetry in this work the writer has talked about the touchstone method there are certain writers who are very good whose passages of poetry can be used as a reference in order to judge the poetry of other writers when then he has criticized several writers like chaucer so matthew arnold's criticism is mainly based on specific works on specific writers whereas the criticism by aristotle it is mainly focus on literature in general right criticism started from 500 bc at that time we had greek critics next came roman empire where longinus contributed in the field of criticism philip sidney was the first critic from britain who wrote the defense of poesy next we have enlightenment critics and romantic critics during victorian period criticism reached in his uh, you know in its uh, highest point during the modern theory during the modern age literary theory starts to begin literary theory has developed through literary criticism itself we have to understand that literary criticism has slowly changed its shape into literary theory now we have to understand what exactly is literature uh, in uh, literary theory how you will define this term in order to understand literary theory let us take an example of a car if you look at the car from a different perspective or you can say different angles you will have a different perception about the car if you look at the car from the front front then you look at the car from the back side or you can say rear from left side angle from right side angle you will have a different opinion about that car when i will put pink color i just give a second example when i will put pink color glasses on my eyes the entire world will look pink if i put red color glasses on my eyes the entire world will look red if i put marxism glasses on my eyes then i look at the piece of literature i will talk about the elements such as you can say class conflicts how ruling class is actually degrading the society how the poor class is suffering if i look at the same text from the feminism glasses i will take out female problems such as uh, you can say how the protagonist is facing some issues because she is a female so literary theory basically helps you look at the single piece from a different perspective let's take an example of one work i have taken one work at some mansfield park if we look at mansfield park from a feminist point of view we will look at the character of fanny price and how she gradually develops into an individual if we look at the same book mansfield park from marxist point of view it will look how britain is colonizing and degrading the condition of other colonized countries so similar text can be looked from different perspective literary criticism will help you in critiquing a word whereas literary theory will help you in critiquing the text yourself you all you yourself become a critic and you all uh, you yourself can interpret literature by using different literary lenses literary criticism is basically about critiquing by important critics and on the other hand literary theory it is about critiquing a piece of literature by yourself criticism does with great writers talking about great works and theory does with talking about great works if i am looking at a certain piece of literature from a different point of view and giving my opinion is what literary theory is all about so these are the main difference between what is a criticism and how will you define literary theory now let's understand the topic new criticism 
New criticism is a literary theory which developed in Britain in 1920. This term new criticism is taken from an essay J. C. Ransom by the same name. So, J. C. Ransom wrote an essay, The New Criticism, which gave this new theory called New Criticism. Why is it called New Criticism? Because it shifts from the old criticism. Old criticism is a kind of criticism wherein you see author's background, you analyze the text. New criticism says that meaning is generated through text. Look at the text, closely read the text and then you find out the meaning. The author's intention is not important because there is an essay written under the criticism titled Intentional Fallacy. In this essay, the essayist says like, uh, you know, so we don't know author's intention and if we don't know author's intention while he is writing the work, how can we judge the work based on the intention? If the writer is writing a work, thinking something in his mind, what he is thinking in his mind? So, how can we interpret the work to get the writer's eyes? Because he is dead. Now, what we don't know, what he was thinking when he wrote the work. So, new criticism is basically concerned with the study of words. And the writer's background is not important. The intention of the writer while writing a work is also not important. The term new criticism came into general use after the publication of J. C. Ransom's book, uh, The New Criticism, which was published in 1941. To be applied to a theory and practice that dominated American literary criticism. Until late in 1960, it is a revolutionary critical movement which is not concerned with, uh, you know, sociological or you can say historical aspects of the age in which the particular poetry is written. Basically, principles of new uh, criticism, basic principles. A poem or a work of art should be treated as an object in itself, primarily as poetry and not as any other thing in analyzing and evaluating a work. They usually don't refer to the author's biography, to contemporary social conditions and psychological or moral, you can say, effects on the reader. The literary critics must approach the work with an open mind, read to study it as it is in itself. The new critics are mainly concerned with the study of words, with the structure of poetry. The new criticism derived their essence from I.R. Richard's practical criticism and William Epson's Seven Types of Ambiguity. And it was published in 1930. Poetry is, you can say, communication and language is a means of communication. So, the new critics seek to understand the full meaning of a poem through a study of poetic language. The key concept of this criticism deal with the meaning and interaction of words, figures of speech and symbols. There is a great emphasis on the organic unity and structure and meaning. I have already talked about what is intentional fallacy is when one confuses the meaning of a work with the other purported, you can say proposed intention expressed in letters, diaries, interviews, etc. And what is affective fallacy? Affective fallacy is enormous practice of interpreting text according to the psychological response of readers. So, students, what uh, normally I want to discuss with you, today uh, I have a topic as is, uh, you know, mainly basically on the topic uh, as new criticism. So, first, 
what we have understood what exactly is criticism in simple sense if you go anywhere if you attend a marriage if you attend any party right so at that time what you observe there it uh, you can't say criticism it will be always in a negative sense it can be a positive it can be a negative so when you are evaluating something when you are you know uh, understanding the things and evaluating in positive and negative manners it is called criticism now we have also understood about how from literary criticism it converts into uh, you know you can say literary theory what is literary theory that i have also you know defined like uh, in simple sense if i have to say you can criticize any work from two point of view in simple sense i can say uh, if there is a one book if i criticize that book from two point of view right so there are the two kinds of literary criticism the first one is evaluating literature in general and second one is evaluating specific works so i have already given a uh, you know example of aristotle and plato what is there aristotle written his work uh, poetics in which uh, he has not uh, you know given a uh, explanation what are the uh, what he has not given any particular criticism on a particular book but he has given general principles in which way what is a good poetry what is a good theory how can you define it's a good theater so in terms of thing evaluating literature in general you know uh, you, so we can include aristotle criticism in this part another part is that evaluating specific work in which i have already given example of uh, you know matthew arnold's touchstone method you know uh, in which you have a idea about that like in the stone method what we have done what we are going to do uh, we take some examples very best paragraph from a very famous work and we compare that work with the other uh, works right and according to that you know so in what i mean to say uh, you know in this kind of criticism what we do we evaluate specific works we are not evaluating criticism as general okay so these are the things what exactly is criticism so also we have uh, you know um, understood about the thing like uh, basic principles of uh, uh, criticism and how it converted into literary theory so i can say uh, through the uh, um, you can say study that uh, from roman period we had critics right even in a greek we had critics after that we had in a britain or uh, in enlightened period in romantic period after that you know victorian period had also come we got so many critics from the point of view right but what happened how literary theory emerged so during a victorian period you can say literary theory starts to begin and what happened literary theory you can say it tries to you can say uh, criticism it tries to convert it into a literary theory now you will have a you know i just give you a brief uh, you know difference between what is criticism and what how will you define this two term criticism and literary theory so in criticism in simple sense what you have to do simply you have to uh, you know criticizing the things you know uh, you look at the thing like i had given you one example in earlier session like uh, if there is a car there is a, only one car but we are watching that car we are the view of a car if we see car from the front point you know it looks different if i see uh, that car from the right angle it looks different so what happened in literary theory as a you know 
as a person we have to apply the theory uh, you can say on particular work and according to that according to that uh, you know applying that theory we have to you know generate the meaning of that particular thing like uh, you know i had given you example of a mansfield park you know if i uh, read that book uh, through the lenses of a marxism so what will happen uh, you know if i i will found the thing like uh, uh, poor conditions are there how rich people degrading the other peoples like right? like you can say poor people so if i see mansfield park through the lenses of a feminist point of view so what will happen i will see the protagonist how uh, she suffers you know fanny there is a one character uh, whose name is a fanny so how she suffers because she is a female so uh in simple sense if i wear pink glass so the whole world i will see in pink color okay if i wear a red glass the whole world i will see in a red manner so the same thing it happens in literary theory if i apply if i see that work through the lenses of marxism i will take out the you can say thing from uh, i can take out the thing through the uh, you know i can find out something through the lenses of marxism if i you know i apply the theory of feminism right so i will take out the thing from the work what exactly it is how protagonist what are the female conditions are there in that work okay so in this way this is the main you can say chronologically aspects like how what is the criticism uh, how by the period like uh, you know greek age roman age then uh, you can say romantic age victorian age and in modern age that literary criticism it takes a shapes into a literary theory okay so one more thing what is a literary theory and uh, you know in simple sense if i have to say what is a you know uh, literary theory and how will you define it so in simple sense if i have to say criticism deals with great writers talking about great works and literary theory deals us you know you can say talking about great works i'm looking at you in a simple sense if i have to say certain piece of literature from a different point of view and giving my opinion is what literary theory is all about okay another thing i have already discussed like uh, you know uh, what is a new criticism so in simple sense i have uh, you know explained like new criticism is a literary theory which is already developed in a britain in 1920 the name new criticism is taken from an essay john crew ransom by the same name okay now why i have uh, no why there is the word is called new criticism why what are the main difference between old criticism and new criticism so i have mentioned here one thing that old criticism is a kind of criticism wherein you see author's background then you analyze the text new criticism says that uh you know what does it mean old criticism is a kind of criticism when you see author's background and you analyze the text means in old criticism what happened whenever you are criticizing that work you have to see you have to observe author's background uh, his uh, historical sociological background right but in new criticism what happens we don't have to that much concern about author's background okay new criticism says that meaning is generated through the text look at the text closely read the text and then you find out the meaning okay so 
in simple sense in new criticism it is basically concerned with the study of words and the writer's background is not that much important right what is a sociological background what are mainly how will a historical background when the work uh, it was written so these are the thing it's not that much important the intention of the writer while writing a work is also not important right so this is the you can say this is the main difference between old criticism and new criticism so in simple sense a uh, new criticism you just have to keep in a mind one thing that there um it is mainly generated through text only right you have to closely read the text then you will find the meaning you don't have to concern about writer's background writer's sociological or historical uh, you can say conditions right also i have given a basic principles of new criticism uh, in a simple sense uh, there are the main two essays that which is mentioned in a new uh, criticism that one is first one is intentional fallacy second one is affective fallacy right what is intentional fallacy and what is affective fallacy so intentional fallacy is when one confuses the meaning of a work with author's purported or you can say author's intention and the affective fallacy is the enormous practice or interpreting text according to psychological or emotional response of readers okay so these are the so in the session we have a normally you know talked about what exactly is criticism how we have to evaluate thing in a general how we have to evaluate through a specific verse uh, regarding uh, you know the work then we have discussed about what is exactly literary theory how it comes into shape what is a new criticism and how you can differentiate new criticism through uh, from you can say old criticism and what are the basic principles of new criticism so thank you Smart, yeah, yeah,